McFarland or McFarland USA. Um, uh, Kevin Costner has a way of making sports that you wouldn't think were very interesting seem more interesting than perhaps you thought they were. Okay, maybe. So, well, you know, so American base, American football and uh, baseball. Yeah, golf was the big one. I love Tin Cup. Do you love Tin Cup? Not really. No. You don't? Well, it, you know, no. Just the once, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. I've seen Tin Cup three, four times. It's absolutely wonderful. I love it. In fact, uh, tin... I love it. Actually, I've just realised I love it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sorry, why have you just... Are you being funny? No, you convinced me. Hey, we're McFarland, USA. Okay, so having done all those sports, Kevin now brings his superstar wattage power to, to, to make exciting the sport of cross-country running. Oh. Yes. Okay. So, anyway, so it's based on... Is he down on his luck, Kevin, a little bit? I don't know. Actually, I rather like McFarland. So the story is he's a, he's a, he's a teacher. He gets uh, fired from his job because he's seen to be stroppy and belligerent. He gets sent off to this place called McFarland, USA. When we first turn up in it, he seems like completely a fish out of water. Uh, he goes to a school which has got you know great financial problems, uh, largely uh, Mexican pupils, and they are spending an awful lot of their time having to go and work in fields and picking. You know, the school is very, very secondary, and he's very much an outsider. And then what he realises is that in running to the fields in which they work backbreaking hours before school and then running back to school because they don't have trucks. They're running faster than most people running in cross-country running. And he decides that what they really need to do is set up a cross-country team. Everyone at McFarland thinks he's completely mad because cross-country is a posh sport, but Kevin's not having it. Okay, here we go. Remember, scoring's based on your individual places, right? You finish first, that's a one. Right? Second, that's a two and so on. Team with the lowest combined score for their top five runners wins. So the lowest score wins? That's right, it's, it's like golf. <laughs> you think we play golf? We don't got a country club. We don't even got a Kmart. But that guy plays golf. <laughs> Hold on. My score don't count? Why am I even here? To make us look faster, possible. All right, look, look, look. Just try and remember, lowest score wins. You get ahead of any one of their top five guys, that adds points to their total. Even you, Danny, got it? Doesn't matter. Let's go show them how it's done. I went in to see this thinking, you know, I've, I like I like Kevin Costner. He can sell me on anything, but except Waterworld, of course, in which he's a fish. But I, it, I quite like Waterworld. Really? Time to reconsider. When, when did you last see it? I just saw it the once. How long ago was that? 1990s? Possibly. Yeah. Okay. I, so here's your. Am I wrong? You really. Here is your challenge. I challenge you to watch Waterworld again, and after 25 minutes, not to just give up and go. I'm sorry. This is the stupidest movie ever made. I mean, it, Waterworld was interesting because it was. It was the case in which it was demonstrated, you know, for once and for all, that it doesn't matter how bad a big budget movie is. If the budget becomes the story, the film will break even. In Japan, Waterworld was marketed with a slogan which was, come and see the most expensive movie ever made in Hollywood. There was all that stuff about there's so much money being invested in it that it can't possibly, it's all around the time of the Pacific Rim thing opening up, it can't possibly make its money back. And it's gone down in history as this cataclysmic failure. But if you actually look at it, it isn't. If you add everything together, all the ancillaries, all the DVD, everything else, Waterworld broke even, demonstrating that even in a movie in which Kevin Costner is a fish, that's a fish, if you threw enough money at it, it'll work. In I this case, liked it. He, no, you didn't. Okay. In this case, he's not a fish. He's a teacher who ends up coaching this team on the, the cross country run. Now, as you know, it's a true story. And you can kind of see from the very beginning, you can plan out, plan out, you know, the entire, I started saying plot and plan at the same time and it became plon. You can plan out the entire movie. This character is going to do this. This is going to happen. There's going to be this bonding scene. There's going to be this falling out sequence. This is going to, and that's fine. But even knowing all that, the movie worked for me. And I sat there watching it and I, on at least two occasions, I was, tears streaming down my face. It was doing the kind of, you know, the uplifting music thing and the triumph over adversity thing. And it was working. And I, I was trying to think, it, it, is this working? Because I basically like Kevin Costner. He's the ultimate, you know, Nick Sparks, let's go sand down a boat and be nice to a dog kind of middle-aged or well, older than middle-aged guy. It, the film worked for me. and I thought it was really quite moving. And I, for all the things that are probably wrong with it, you know, ham and cheese to go and, and all that stuff, 
It worked on two separate occasions. I cried. I don't think anybody will go and see it. I don't think it's going to be a hit or anything, but it'll turn up later on. You'll be on a plane or you'll watch it on DVD and people go, you know, this is a much better movie than we gave it credit for at the time. What's it called? McFarland, USA.